Fiber plays a vital role in our diets and brings a host of health benefits, but we're not getting enough. Government guidelines recommend 30 grams a day, but on average, we are only eating 20. Tate and Lyle have been researching and developing ways to help bridge the fiber gap. And joining me now is their global head, nutrition and regulatory affairs, Kavita Karnik. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about fiber. We know we need to eat more, but there are different needs at different ages, aren't there? Let's start right at the beginning, the early years. What are the needs? As we know more and more about the role of fiber for gut health, we know that fiber is essential ingredient throughout the life course. So starting with very young babies and going up to toddlers and children, um, we know gut health environment needs to be healthy for a solid foundation when the child is born. Um, there are several factors that affect it, like whether you're born by C-section or vaginal belt or whether the child was fed breast milk or infant formula. So two fibers, GOS and FOS, are added to infant formula, baby milk, baby foods, uh, to help the child uh, to achieve an optimum gut health environment. And then when the, when the kids grow up, uh, I'm sure there are fussy eaters and don't want fruit, don't want vegetables. Um, so they need some extra help through fiber fortified uh, foods and beverages. That may include fiber fortified cereal, yogurt, uh, or smoothies. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't get fiber enough at that age, age group, uh, we have seen that there's association of reduced fiber intake with allergies, constipation, and also some immune markers are depressed with low fiber intake. It's really important. And moving on to adults, we mentioned earlier, as a nation, we're not getting enough mm -hmm. fiber. What are the health implications of that? We know reduced fiber intake is associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. And in the world that we live in, where nearly half of us are going to be either obese or overweight in the next few years, fiber can have a very useful role for public health challenges. And let's look at later years as well. How does the fibre gap impact on the health of older mm -hmm. adults, mm -hmm. the elderly? Mm -hmm. We know fibre as high bran, fruit, vegetables, nuts. And then you can imagine after a certain age group in older adults, chewing becomes a problem, reduced appetite is a problem, cooking itself is a problem, um, and actually need of fiber is really increased in that age group. That's because gut bacterial diversity goes down with age. Fiber can help to restore that. Lots of things going on there. Uh, we know the foods that have high fiber, for example, whole grains, pulses, mm. vegetables, but what can help boost fiber intake? If, for example, like you say, in mm. elderly pe people mm. perhaps might not be able to mm. be eating those type of foods. Um, technology has allowed us to add fiber to various foods. So at Tate and Isle, um, we have a portfolio of soluble fibers and we offer that to food and beverage manufacturers that can use these fibers to fortify commonly used foods. Um, this can include breakfast cereals, bakery, uh, flavored waters, and even chocolate. Fiber not only improves your gut health, but fiber also allows to take the sugar out. When you take the sugar out, fiber can help to put the bulk back in. So you get two in one, you get gut health, high fiber and also reduce sugar. It's a win-win for public health. Let's look to the future. What is next for fiber research? We are looking at importance of fibers in brain health. We are about to finish a large clinical looking at the impact of our fibers on cognition and understanding the overall gut-brain axis. Some of the research we had done in the past showed us that um, fortification of fibers by UK standards at the levels that UK regulations allow mm. can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke in about 70% uh, in UK population. And all the research we do towards improving the health and well-being through fiber is a solution for uh, public health challenges such as obesity and type 2 as well. It's fascinating talking to you. Kavita Karnik, thank you very much. Thank you very much.